Hi guys, this is Mac here and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. So let's make this session a little bit rocking style with my guest. His name is Kashan Adamani. He is a wonderful, wonderful human being and a personality, music personality, which I'll be taking his interview now. And it's a great honor of mine. After some time, he was such a busy person with his schedules and preparing a new music i would say so let us welcome him and learn about the rock and pop star which he is and with how many wonderful people and the musicians he has been collaborated internationally and locally and i'm sure you would love to hear his voice and we're going to be having a little bit concert style with a guitar in his hand and the music which he plays the, what type of music he plays we all would become his fan today so good evening kashan adamani how are you I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So, can I call you a rock and a pop star for this show Not today? Not really, man. I, I don't consider myself a star in any way. It's just that I do what I do, and if somebody thinks that's what I am, it's up to them. But uh, I just uh, love playing music, producing music, composing music, and uh, that's what I do for a living. And okay. uh, I'm also, you know, I mean, anything related to media production. Uh, that is what I really care about and I love doing it. Wonderful. So let's start your journey by knowing who is Mr. Kashan Adamani and how did this music interest and the passion instilled in you from a younger days or whatever the time it was which motivated you to become a, into music industry. So go ahead and give a little bit introduction about yourself and then we're going to make this enjoyable with Mamoon in the style. Go ahead. Um, so I'd like to say that, you know, I, as a kid, I was uh, always interested in music and I wanted to play music. I used to play the keyboard when I was a kid and mm -hmm. I composed my first song when I was in grade four. And um, after that, I sort of, uh, you know, decided to pursue music as a career. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, because that's the only thing that came naturally to me. And I thought that would be the, uh, you know, the best career choice uh, because uske lava mujhe kuch karne ka I really didn't want to sort of uh, do anything else apart from music. So, you know, I was very fortunate that I uh, got to work with some of the best musicians in Pakistan, some leading names, some amazing artists. And um, I was able to put together a band which released, you know, uh, two albums, one of which was released internationally. I produced a, uh, quite a few bands. I produced music for a lot of uh, known artists, famous artists. And I also, uh, you know, launched my own uh, platform known as Acoustic Station uh, to, to sort of promote uh, Pakistani music and uh, okay. we did season one of that show last year with a lot of uh, new talent and a lot of established acts also and after that um, I've been doing a lot of music for TV commercials, uh, films, uh, documentaries, uh, songs, uh, scores and whatnot and currently I'm also aspiring to make a feature film, uh, mm -hmm. the kind of film that I wanted to produce always so, you know, these are, uh, <laughs> this is some background on me. And um, uh, a few months back, I also did a global collaboration with 40 musicians and Grammy winning, wow. winning musicians from all over the world, uh, which mm -hmm. featured some amazing international artists and musicians. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. I think. So mm -hmm. which uh, platform, whether it's Coke Studio or the Battle of the Bands, what is the difference between those two groups? I think they're always in head-to-head -head and the neck-to-neck -neck in terms of giving the new talent to the country. What do you have to say on that? Well, I, I don't think uh, Coke Studio is, is uh, really a platform for new talent. Coke Studio is basically uh, <clears throat> a platform where established acts mostly uh, come on. They're, they're, they have introduced a lot of new talent also, but that's mm -hmm. not their, their format primarily. But as no. far as Pepsi Battle of the Bands is concerned, that's where you get to see a lot of new bands and a lot of new talent. And I think mm -hmm. that program's format is completely different. So the nice. two uh, platforms do not have anything in common as such. And I don't mm -hmm. think they're competing platforms. I'd say, I mean, it's great that we have these, uh, you know, brands um, supporting these uh, platforms and creating these platforms because that's how the music industry will survive and has survived in Pakistan. Otherwise, I think uh, after the, uh, the you know, uh, the fall of uh, uh, the music business, which was, uh, I think, 2008, 2009, was a very bad time for Pakistani music. And after that, 
I think Coke Studio really played a major role in uh, keeping it live and uh, you know uh, really keeping our music relevant. So they have a huge contribution, in my opinion, uh, to uh, you know um, the music business and the music industry. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'd say that these platforms are really important uh, for Pakistani music. And uh, <clears throat> you know I always wanted to have my own platform also, so that I could help uh, support Pakistani music and artists and new talent. And whatnot. So my company, Dream Station Productions, also uh, produced a show last year, which is called Acoustic Station, and um, we put together, you know, a great uh, lineup of uh, upcoming new singers and uh, also established acts. And the great thing was that we had a mix of talent from Coke, all these platforms, on our show, and it was an unplugged show, a, a, a proper unplugged uh, performance of uh, various songs, uh, original songs. So. So I think that was a very um, interesting uh, take on, uh, you know, music and, and you know, songs that um, uh, we badly needed in uh, Pakistan. So I think uh, there was no other platform doing proper unplugged music. So I thought, you know, having an unplugged platform would really make a difference. And it really did. And uh, people really loved the show and they liked the songs. And I'm grateful that, you know, we got so much of appreciation for it. Looking forward to do uh, season two which would be slightly delayed because we had a, a, a flooding situation at my uh, primary studio. Uh, okay. Okay. So what rebuilding what is time? going to take a bit of time. But so, so the rebuilding is taking a bit of time, my reconstruction of my studio. So the program would be slightly delayed this time, but uh, hopefully soon we will be uh, carrying on with acoustic station season. So what type of music uh, you usually play and your band consists of how many people? You said four people? Well, my band is, is uh, not very active at this point in time because um, I'm, very much, uh, fo I'm very much focused on uh, production these days. And uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of music production and uh, a lot of other uh, you know, uh, uh, production related uh, ventures. Uh, so. I'm not really focused on the band at this point in time. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, but when we were uh, active, we were a band of about three to four members, depending on, you know, uh, what time period you're talking about. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at this point in time, I'm, I'm completely focused on my production career and that's what I'm doing right now. So do you make the music videos as well, which we see on the TV where the singers are having uh, it's like they're singing. Yes, I, I, I do make music videos also. Uh, and uh, I also do um, a lot of, um, uh, I mean, like my show was entirely produced by, you know, uh, my company and my team. And I was mm -hmm. uh, actively involved in the production and visuals of that show. And um, uh, so, so yes, I mean, uh, I we do complete turnkey production uh, uh, in terms of visuals and sound and everything. So what do you see in an upcoming singer which approaches you to record their voices in your production house as an audition purposes? So do you see their intensity, their voice, or do you see their style which you feel that they can be part of the band? The only thing they... you have to see is their talent. I think okay. the talent plays the most important role. I really don't care about where they come from, where you know what their background is. Uh, uh -huh. If I find somebody, um, you know, who's very talented i try my best to help them support them and and you know uh, do the best i can for them and in whatever capacity i can so oftentimes i get a new artist to sing jingles for me uh, when i'm doing jingles for a commercial uh, i also uh, sometimes you know create songs for them original songs or place them in you know different uh, soundtracks if i can so you know it it, it depends if i find a compelling uh, artist and i find that you know that uh, a person is really talented, musically talented, and I go out of my way to help them because that is what is going to build our industry, and uh, that is my primary focus always. We we all know that Pakistan is always having talented people in every industries. Even if, if you look at the music or the concerts or the band or the singers we have, they always are a bit different from the other countries. But what separates Pakistan's music? from Bollywood and the Euro. What do you think where we are lacking or we have all the attributes to become the nation in producing great musicians? I'll tell you what, we're not lacking in any way. 
uh, whatsoever. Uh, I think we have some great musicians out here and some okay. great talent, and a lot of people are doing some great work and uh, you know contributing to the music scene. Um, uh, but you have to understand one thing that we're not uh, like Bollywood. We never have been like Bollywood. So we our music is very folk inspired and uh, also very West inspired. Okay. So, so a lot of musicians that you come across have never been inspired by Bollywood music. I mean, they, they it's not that they don't like it, but it's just that it's never been an inspiration. Uh, okay. That's why our pop was always different. And that's the reason why our pop transcended across the border. And, you know, uh, a lot of uh, Indian labels and Indian companies released our music. And uh, they loved our music because it was different. It was not like Bollywood. It was very unlike Bollywood, uh, which is why... Pakistani music made a mark, uh, you know, uh, in the global music scene. And Pakistani music is like, uh, is very much like international pop or international rock or international. Uh, you know, that's the that's the kind of music that uh, Pakistani musicians aspire to create, and and have been very successful in making. And that is the reason. That's why we see many of our famous celebrities and singers, you know, like Rahat Fateh Ali Khan Sahab, Atif Aslam, Ali Zafar, and many more. Who have the, 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 the amazing right. fact is that you know in India, the music director is everything, but out mm -hmm. here in Pakistan, the artist is everything because they make their own music, they write their own songs, they write their mm -hmm. own music, they write their own pieces. And uh, uh, for instance, Rahat Fateh Ali's song, uh, the first song that came out in Bollywood was his song, as opposed to some director making it. Uh, uh, likewise, Atif Aslam's first song was his own song, as opposed to somebody else making that song for him. Uh, and that went into a film, and then from that point on, he did. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, sing for other music directors also, but primarily uh, the introduction, uh, uh, you know, came about through his uh, own songs, and uh, not something that was created for him by somebody else. So that you know, is the unique thing about Pakistani artists. You know, they're, they're songwriters also. As you know, we all have grown up uh, uh, watching. The Junoon group from 1996 onwards, yes. you know, they were the most famous band group, which I cannot think of when I was young. And because they had attended different uh, concerts in different countries and all. And they were so famous that they were being uh, overly packed, overly packed stadiums and the uh, concerts where they used to organize, uh, go and play their songs. What do you have to say about the Junoon mm -hmm. uh, at now and what they have changed. Basically, they were the amazing people, right? Ali Azmat, Salman Ahmed. I think uh, Junoon was an iconic Pakistani band and uh, uh, Junoon was the only Pakistani band that actually made a, a, you know, introduced Pakistani music to the international music scene. And I mm -hmm. think a huge credit goes out to, uh, you know, Salman Ahmed, uh, Ali Azmat, Brian, who are legends in their own right. and. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to copy them, you know, with their hairstyle or the jackets. And yes, the yes, songs. yes. I mean, they were they were an inspiration for a lot of people in, uh, you know, uh, who, who grew up in the 90s. And, uh, you know, they, they really uh, had a huge impact on uh, the youth, prep, uh, especially. And uh, I know that a lot of my friends used to love listening to Junoon and they were all huge Junoon fans. In fact, we all were Junoon fans. We used to, you know, like hearing their music playing their music and whatnot. And I, I was fortunate enough to actually be a part of their reunion concert. And uh, they, they conducted the rehearsals at my studio when they were doing the reunion. And Salman asked me to also join them live on stage. And it was a, it was a very uh, you know, exciting experience because you get to see how, how, how many people love their music. And we, I, I did two shows with them, one in uh, Karachi and the other in Dubai. And I was completely blown away by the kind of audience response they had. And it's, it's, it's incredible that, you know, a, a Pakistani band, uh, you know, becomes so huge. And you see that magic uh, happening uh, uh, even after like a huge break that they took when they came about, when they came together again. It was, you know, phenomenal how people responded to, uh, you know, their concert and uh, how everyone came out. And we had, we saw huge crowds attending the concert. Mm -hmm. And I think that was also, again, a big contribution to the music scene because uh, that would also uh, sort of uh, trigger uh, more and more bands uh, doing such big shows and 
uh, you know, and it also helped the industry in many ways. So I think that was, again, a contribution on their part to the music scene. Well, I can see the guitar in your hands, so let us not wait a bit more longer to hear some amazing tunes as a guitarist which you play. I, would like to I, that. <laughs> I, I don't know what to play right now, but... Um, it's, it's all yours, whatever you can think of. Well, this is famous tune. jazz tune, a, a tune I, I just like to uh, play a, a finger, uh, sorry, a melody, chord melody sort of thing. Um, sure. This jazz song. stars let me see what spring is like on jupiter and mars in other words hold my hand in other words baby kiss me fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore you are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, well, in other words, I love you. No, you rock. Man, you rocked it. You're a rock star for sure. <laughs> keep it up, keep it up, man. Keep it up, champ. You're awesome. awesome. So, you know, like, what type of music do you think at the moment is attracting the youngsters to go for? The pop, the rock, the hip hop, or the Pakistani Sufi? I, I think um, these days, music, um, uh, music that attra attracts most uh, people is, is pop. And okay. um, it's always been the case. I mean, pop is always usually more popular than, you know, that's why it's called pop. And um, I see a lot of uh, great new artists doing some great music. Uh, and, um, you know, um, and, and the amazing thing is that they're also integrating the, the elements of genres like rock, like a lot of guitar has come into pop music. And, uh, you know, a lot of 80s synths are coming back. So you see a lot of these, um, you know, really important sounds uh, becoming a part of the modern, uh, you know, music and, and new artists are also using those instruments and creating a really interesting sound. So I think um, that is my, my observation about uh, the current uh, music scenario. Um, so uh, yeah. pop is what is most popular these days. You know, when we think about music, we think about cricket. And when we think about cricket, the music has to be there, you know, because it motivates our cricketers on the field in a different way. If you can remember 1992's World Cup or any World Cups, there are mu World Cup songs are there by the musicians, which really motivates the um, audience when they're in their cars or in the stadiums where they play those songs and they, they pump them up, you know, with the cricket. Have you ever thought about making any song for our cricketers or the cricket team or the PSL, which has started happening in Pakistan? Well, uh, and I mean, stuff we've, like we've that. all thought about making songs for cricket or sports. Um, I think for me, uh, I, I would be more interested in creating a motivational song, which can okay. work on cricket or any other you know, purpose, which, which is to motivate people. Uh, okay. So okay. I was primarily made for cricket itself, but mm -hmm. um, I, I really appreciate the sport and I, um, you know, really like watching it. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, if there's an opportunity where mm -hmm. somebody asks me to create a song for cricket, I would. But uh, generally, I, I feel that uh, that would really, uh, you know, make a difference. Uh, and uh, you might be aware that I created a motivational song um, during the COVID situation during the lockdown. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I brought together a global collaboration featuring 40 musicians from all over the world, uh, including some amazing uh, musicians and Grammy winning artists. And uh, the, the song was bilingual and it had English lyrics and also Urdu lyrics and also some Brazilian lines, Portuguese lines, basically. So um, uh, I'd say that, you know, um, these um, songs are always, uh, you know, created to motivate people to bring in a positive feeling, to create a positive uh, impact on, on people. And uh, uh, that is my objective always when I create a motivational song. And that's what I would want to do as opposed to creating a song for a specific event or a specific, uh, I mean, I, I don't mind doing it, but, um, you know, if I'm making a song, which is not, uh, you know, for somebody else, which is not for a brand or for a, for a sponsor, then it'd be a, a generic song as opposed to being a specific song. You know, as I go along, as you mentioned about the motivation, motivational song, my all time favorite is Jazba Junoon of Junoon Band Group, which they have. An amazing played. song. So do you, do you, can you play those or can you sing a little bit of well, that? I, I, I can play it for sure, but I'm not uh, much of a singer. So I don't think um, I should be singing maybe, it. <laughs> maybe I will help you with a song, basically, because I just know a few lines. Maybe you can sing the song and I can play with the Jaspa Junu, do him matna. Jaspa Junu, do him matna. Jaspa Junu, do him matna. Jaspa Junu, do him Amazing man, I just my all time favorite. Whenever I watch cricket, I usually put some songs for <laughs> different singers you know who have played it's an amazing people. song i think it's one of the best uh national songs we have uh in pakistan and i think it's it's a, a huge um, shout out to saman ahmed and ali azmat and brian for creating this amazing song and they're legends True. like i said and, and, and they've really made it 1992 world cup victory you know yes you you can never forget how that song sort of connected with the the, the, the victory and then, uh, I mean, it's always been, it, it'll, it'll, I think this song will always remain in our hearts and it'll uh, always be there. It's, it's a great, I think it's a national treasure <laughs> in terms and, of an artistic and piece. Because of pandemic and COVID, the event industry or the musicians like you who are not going out to perform because of taking care and things are not in a, inshallah, it will improve in the coming days. But what are you planning? And for the last six months, how did you cope up with pandemic related to music by staying at home or in your studio recordings and stuff? What were your plans? And well, I mean, uh, the, the, the pandemic was actually uh, uh, sort of productive for me because um, during the lockdown, I found the time to actually work on a lot of uh, projects that I'd initiated and I wasn't able to give time to them. Uh, one of which is my instrumental album, although I still have not been able to complete it, but I'm constantly writing on my guitar pieces and uh, I hope to release it very soon. And I have some amazing international musicians on it, uh, uh, including, uh, you know, the amazing drummer Simon Phillips um, uh, from L.A. And he's, he's, he's been part of some amazing bands, international bands. And he came down to Pakistan to record that album with me. So I'm hoping to finish it very soon. And uh, the lockdown did give me uh, a lot of time to work on it. So I'm, I'm hoping to sort of finish that uh, this year and release it very soon. So, uh, and a lot of other ventures that I wanted to start, I got the time to do that uh, during the lockdown. And I got to sort of collaborate with so many artists and I made that global song, We Are One, which you can check out on YouTube. Um, it's called We Are One, uh, Global Collaboration. And uh, that was also one of uh, the huge project which features uh, some of the best Pakistani artists and also, um, you know, uh, these international artists. So I think that was a great uh, venture. And then I'm being, I've been involved in uh, a lot of other, uh, you know, ventures, 
uh, which I'm working on currently. So the lockdown actually gave me a lot of time to work on things that I was otherwise not, uh, you know, able to focus on. So I think, um, in a way, COVID was, I mean, it was definitely a, a terrible situation. And um, I was also suffering in many ways, but, uh, and I got infected also, by the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I see it as a positive thing because any change that comes about, uh, you have to look at it from a positive point of view, from, a, from an optimistic, uh, optimistic uh, point of view. And I think I got the opportunity to sort of, uh, you know, do things that I was otherwise neglecting. So I, I see it as a positive thing. I'm going to mention the names of our singers, but I, I'm not going to compare them with each other, basically because they are unique in their own style, their flavors, the way they make their music. But it's just for our audience to know what you think about them in terms of giving them the ratings from 1 to 10 in terms of their talent, their skill, and aura they have been for the last 20 years, okay, for the change they have brought to the music industry. I have them. I have one answer to this. I would okay. want I wouldn't want to rate any artist because okay. anybody who, who who tries to do music in Pakistan and okay. pursues that as a career deserves mm. a salute. And uh, you know this is not a very not not a very easy place to be doing um, you know to be uh, a part of uh, the music business. It's not very easy to survive in the music business. And anybody who has done anything in the music uh, scene has to, uh, you know, deserves uh, appreciation, deserves um, all sorts of, uh, I think, uh, uh, generic, I think. The confidence no, no, you I, can come. No, no, yeah. you have to appreciate them because, you see, in a country like Pakistan, if somebody's pursuing a music career, I think that's a, a big enough challenge. Uh, so if, if you don't appreciate them, how are you going to get more and more artists, great artists? So I think everybody has played a great role. Anybody who's done anything significant deserves a salute. For sure. A big salute from Backlogs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So what are, what are your future plans related well, to your um, I, I've just learned one thing that whatever planning you may uh, do, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> really uh, work. Uh, I agree. Because, you know, situation the, the COVID situation really told, told taught us that you know uh, oh. you you can't plan your future. <laughs> so oh, right. I think uh, for me, I'm just trying to do a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm currently working on a feature film. I'm currently working on my music album. I'm working mm -hmm. on a lot of other uh, interesting projects and also acoustic station. So I'm constantly trying to create music and uh, art and uh, you know um, a lot of other. Um, media related things um, but um, um, as such I don't know how you know where things will end and how things will happen I'm just planning and trying to execute but it's uh, up to God if I would be able to achieve it or do it or you know if I won't be able to uh, finish the projects but I think if you keep at it and if you uh, are positive then things uh, do happen and uh, that's my faith uh, so I think um, I, I wouldn't want to say that I have a very concrete future plan. Yes, I do have plans, but uh, for them to materialize, I think, uh, inshallah, if God's inshallah. <laughs> willing, then uh, I, they will happen, inshallah. inshallah. I wish you all the best in your life for whatever Thank you so do. Much. Thank you. In doing with the passion which you have for the music and help and lift the other musicians and the upcoming youth of ours who want to enter the music industry. You know, this question is really important at the moment. At, uh, let's see if that can work out. Can MacLogs and Ka Kashan, Kush, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to pronounce your name. It's Kush Khan, right? It's Kashan Admani. Kashan Admani, okay. So is there a way that MacLogs and Kush Khan collaborate together for a different... Well um, you can come up with some ideas if you have any ideas or if you have something in mind, let me know if I can help and I can contribute and I'll sh surely, you know, try to uh, be a part yeah, of it. Thinking, uh, but, yeah, I'm just thinking that my YouTube channel should have a, some sort of a music video where I can promote the talent in a different way, as you mentioned earlier about the motivational music. So as my whole idea about my channel is to motivate, 
connect and promote the different people from all around the world and especially my Pakistani youth and the talent we possesses. Why not anybody if they would like to be in my channel? So your music as a background music would add that value to collaborate together. Well, I mean, just let me know whatever you whatever help you require, and I'll try to sort of uh, you know be a part of it uh, and help you and support you. Uh, as it is, I think you're doing a great job. You're trying to interview Pakistani artists, Pakistani uh, talent. Which is a great contribution, and uh, I, I wish you all the best and wish you uh, success in your venture. And, uh, now, okay, you just tell me what type of music is this? Okay, this is what I have used it for my special brand background music. Okay. This was the music, if you could hear, that I had created along with my friend for my channel, uh, Brand. What do you have to say on that? Um, I mean, I couldn't really hear it properly, but I think it's an electronic piece and it's uh -huh. just nice. And I think if it works for you, it's great. Fine. Thank you so much, Kashan uh, Adamani, for Thank being you. a good host and enjoy having you on my channel really sparked my confidence to a next level by becoming a singer i would say <laughs> but i'm not a singer at all but you really helped me in taking out the interest of my music which i go way back along you know so it's really helped me so before we wrap up our session i would ask you in a very humble request uh, another one small beat from your guitar and a shout out from you for my youtube channel. <laughs> Hi, check out Mac Vlogs if you want to see some great Pakistani and international views and uh, you know, talk shows. Uh, Mac is doing a great job. Uh, do support him. Do watch his channel. Do subscribe to his channel. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving a shout out to Mac. Uh, hello. Sorry, I think thank we you. have an internet problem. No worries about that. As long as our hearts connect, nobody can stop us from connecting. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much and for being part of MacLog's journey and being my guest today. It was really an honor to have you on my show. And let's hope that I can connect and promote you internationally where people can come and talk to you whenever they're in Pakistan and take the best service and utilize your mu uh, music experience and expertise and record their songs in Pakistan, inshallah. Keep working hard, keep doing the work, work with your passion, it's really amazing. See you soon, inshallah, in your studio with the upcoming songs and the music which you're making. I would definitely come down to your studio soon. Sure, most welcome. So, so everyone, in a rocking and a pop style, do press the bell icon and subscribe Mac Vlogs to keep on supporting my channel where I can keep on bringing wonderful, amazing people like Kash, Kashahan, Adamani, and the other people for my channel. Thank you so much once again. Take care and salute to you for your great work. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum